Welcome and aloha. Thank you so much for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii. We're here to share, provoke, and invite thoughts on things that hopefully matter to all of us. And today we're extremely fortunate to have with us Catherine Knorr for the first time on this show, although Catherine's a frequent Think Tech host uh, on esports and one of the leading authorities, as well as a very respected, accomplished, experienced attorney, which you would hardly imagine by looking at her very youthful appearance, um, which she has managed to maintain, and I have not, uh, but I don't resent that. I simply admire and emulate it. We have Ben Davis, a professor emeritus from University of Toledo School of Law and visiting professor at Washington and Lee School of Law, and also a former longtime member of the International Chamber of Commerce in France. Um, and Sandra Sims, both a retired Hawaii judge and, and author. And so we're going to talk some about politics in the Olympics, which has again shown its less than attractive head uh, with the withdrawal of Jordan Child's bronze medal and the transfer of that medal to the Romanian athlete by an arbitration group, one of whose members who may have been influential being actually a leading Romanian prosecutor. We're back here again. We started in 1972 and even before that, back during the time of Hitler when he tried to turn the Olympics to his advantage. Ben, I know you and your wife, Odette, have written on this particular issue and topic. Can you give us a little bit of the history of the politics in the Olympics? If you go back to 1896 with uh, Coubertin, the idea was to create this event where you know everyone in the world would compete. And it, going back to sort of the idea in Greece, which was along the lines that when they were having those games, no one was having wars, right? So it's like an, a, a tool for peace. That was kind of part of the image of what the Olympics were doing. And then, you know, as it's gone along, it has uh, become part of very complex political uh, processes of uh, different host countries. Who gets to be a host country? There have been scandals about whether there's been money been paid to somebody or something done to try to get X country to be a host. Obviously, there was the 36 Olympics with uh, with Hitler, um, where uh, there was all these things built in Berlin. Uh, one of the things about that particular Olympics was that there were messages sent out by the Nazis to basically all the Germans to be nice to the Jews so that, you know, we wouldn't look bad in the world. I mean, there's, I mean, this is like our orchestrated sort of let's look all perfect thing um, that was part of that. And in fact, where I used to work at the International Chamber of Commerce in Paris, they held their World Chambers meeting in Berlin in 1936 with the president being Thomas Watson of IBM. And if you ever have want to read something fun, oh, I don't know if fun is the right word, you should read a book by Edwin Black, called IBM and the Holocaust, which was written in 2000, where he points out that the new, new thing in the technology at the time is something that, since we are people of a certain age, card punch technology. Remember those little cards with 80 little holes in the kind of thing yeah. back in the 60s in the IBM 360? I well, do. that was a new, new thing back then. And uh, I, uh, Thomas Watson with IBM and with its local... Uh, German subsidiary worked very hard in 1933 to get the uh, the the uh, census for Germany for Hitler when Hitler came to power, and to basically play this role of providing this new new technology of card punch technology and guess what sorting machines you know so you could sort you know say I want to go after Jews who are in cities that are under 200 people who are over 85 years of age. And you could put that in the machine and a bunch of cards would come out with like, I don't know, 15 people in different parts of Germany and they would disappear. So you wouldn't see a bunch of folks disappear but initially, you just say they disappear. And that was thanks to the IBM technology, which as the Nazis went around Europe, 
they used it in all the different countries. Now, fast forward to 1972 in Munich, say if we take that with a horrendous um, uh, attack that happened there in Germany, again, but one of the interesting things about Germany at that time was that, you know, you had the children of the parents who had been in World War II who had learned about what had happened in World War II as part of the German effort to come to terms with it. And they asked their parents, what did you do during the Nazis period? And it was a very disturbing thing for these kids that led to a lot of the sort of the student rebellion stuff in the 60s over in Germany too, okay? So um, the other thing I just wanted to say since we the Olympics now were in Paris was that when the Nazis took over France, they would go to the head of the statistical office and tell them what they wanted, which was to get this card punch technology to find out where all the Jews were and all that stuff. And the guy who was the head of the statistical place was actually working for the resistance. So he played the wonderful French thing where he's like, I cannot work on this today. It is, it is lunchtime. You know, I would get the, I would work on it. Ah, we have had a problem with the machine. You know, we have to go and call Monsieur to get come the fix man to fix the machine. You know, I mean, they, this guy was doing all this stuff to basically sabotage the effort of getting these lists in in, in, in France. And at the time, since I worked at the ICC, I know this story because I knew the guy who um, actually sat at the ICC during that time. The ICC itself, the International Chamber of Commerce, moved up to Sweden during the war, but it still had arbitration cases among the Axis country disputes and then among the Allied com country disputes about you know business deals and all that. But when the Nazis got to Paris, they went to the ICC and said, "We give us the names of all your not, uh, of all your Jewish arbitrators." And the ICC said, "I'm terribly sorry, sir. We don't have a list of arbitrators," which is true because the ICC has uh, arbitrators uh, are, are proposed by the national committees. So that was sort of part of the reason I think that that. It was a strong idea in terms of that organization to have not have a quote-unquote ICC arbitrator. Contrast that with the Court of Arbitration for Sports, which has a group of people who are the magical people, who are the ones who are sort of the anointed to be the arbitrators for the various cases. So that's a little, little bit of history. I just want to say also that having lived in France for 17 years and watching this, I loved it. It was wonderful to watch. And I... I envy Catherine for having been there uh, during that because this time around, what really struck me was the way that the French integrated all of these amazing buildings in the festivities and the Seine yeah. River and all that. I mean, and, you know, culminating with uh, Celine Dion singing on the Eiffel Tower, which she hasn't sung in four years, I hear. Amazing. But there was another thing that maybe you don't might not appreciate is when the Olympic uh, torch was right in front of the Eiffel Tower. The guy who carried it was a guy named Zinedine Zidane. He was the captain of the French World Cup team that won the World Cup in 1998. And he's kind of like a combination of, I don't know, Magic Johnson, uh, Larry Bird, uh, Will Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the sort of the sports lexicon of the uh of the uh of the french so to see him as a guy who lived there in 1998 very moving too all right so i can go on forever but it was i'm sorry to say so much but i there were all these amazing things that go on and especially with the french just having had their elections i think that this is a real you know, feather in the cap for Macron, not necessarily saying that, you know, it's going to change a lot. But anyway, I love the French. So that's maybe a little background. I hope that helps. Very, very helpful. So, Catherine, how did arbitration, which has taken hold in the legal system for decades, how did it take hold in athletics and the Olympics in particular? And how has that transpired in ways that may be different than our concept of arbitration in and related to our legal system? Before I um, 
dive into that, I do want to note that I'm really glad that Ben brought up Pierre de Coubertin to mention Olympism. And um, I will note that the Olympic Charter upholds the autonomy of sport, ensuring that it operates independently of political, religious, or economic influence. And so the court arbitration of sport, uh, uh, the ad hoc division serves the Olympic Games to provide swift resolution of issues, including uh -huh. doping and other issues um, uh, that happened during the Olympic Games. Um, for many years, for various Olympics, I've spoken at um, Olympic conferences. Um, uh, for example, I spoke in, at Cambridge and at um, Ithaca College London uh, leading up to the uh, London Olympics. And I recall that one of the um, um, IOC um, uh, arbitrators was with us. And that was pretty uh -huh. interesting to talk with him and talk about the expedience that he has to have when um, when they're addressing these yeah. issues. How is the arbitration process and the people who most influence it and in the Olympics, how is that different than what we see in most of our legal system arbitrations? In the particular case that we're talking about today, the Jordan Childs um, case and moving to that, um, there's something that I'm not sure that people are aware of. And I learned of this in a New York Post article that was written about um, what transpired that led to the decisions in this case. And one thing that you may not realize that um, uh, Romania, actually, we, we, we go back to, there were four issues, four things that occurred here. The first thing was the start value um, for uh -huh. Jordan Child's um, Florax was low, so they appealed it. Okay, and then, then um, they FIG um, um, the uh, federation and the judges they rightly increased the start value. Then, right. then Romania appealed um, the um, the decision to give Jordan Child's the bronze, and then what happened was. Um, Romania appealed the the ruling and it went to the IOC, their ad hoc division. And the problem that arose was that they emailed the notice um, to the wrong email addresses for USA Gymnastics. And so uh, USA Gymnastics were not advised of this appeal until 24 hours before the hearing. And uh -huh. then they filed a motion to extend time uh, for fairness, and the IOC granted it, but only allowed two hours. And so they had uh, about approximately 20 hours to respond. And so that was the other issue. It was not only the uh, CAS emailing to the wrong addresses with no notice, but there was a question of whether the disclosures were made of the representation of that IOC arbitrator um, of the Rom of Romania. So the question is whether there was ever any notice and whether they had that opportunity to respond. Like there's a couple of things, and mm -hmm. I want to get your input, Sandra, but a couple of things that have come out. One difference from the kind of arbitration that we're used to in the legal system is that the parties don't have any say in the selection of the arbitrators. Is that correct? In the ad hoc setting, that's, yeah, they, they get appointed like that from right. a list. There's a, about a month or so before the Court of Arbitration for Sports says, hey, these are the folks for this particular Olympics. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the, 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 the group from which the arbitrators are picked. And then normally in a dispute case, the arbitrators have to make very extensive disclosures of any business and personal relationships that they may have, anything that might be, as it's usually legally put, taken as an objective indication of some kind of bias or evident partiality. And that does not happen in this process, correct? 
There's no disclosure. So, there, there is a, um, uh, there, there is a rule which requires that the uh, the arbitrators, uh, not necessarily clear if it's before their appointment, but at least that they make a disclosure of any kind of ties to, that would affect their independence or impartiality. And uh, so what what kind of got me going on this thing was that when I heard that the decision was that uh, was the, the increase of Jordan Childs's uh, score was uh, denied because the inquiry was made in 64 seconds, which was four seconds longer than the rule that this FIG, the Federation of Gymnasts, had. Because that, and Judge, you might understand this feeling from me uh, in particular, be, is that it was uh, putting form over substance in terms of the, the, you know, you have express conditions in American law and even with express conditions, they can be excused, right? Uh, exactly. I'm not talking about substantial performance. I'm talking about just an express condition uh -huh, of the contract. Uh -huh. And and everything that Catherine talked about, for me, it's not law. It's just contractual structures, charters, things like that, that, um, uh, that are in place that are not sort of like the legislated law that we talk about or common law or something like that. So... I kind of said that looks weird because and I actually got criticized by contracts professors because I was like, well, you know, you know, you're you, you're not respecting express conditions, you know, and I was like, no, nah, this stinks to because. And knowing from the arbitration world, so to speak, that seemed to be a little much. That's like ducking the issue. Right. And I felt really bad, not only for Jordan Childs, but also for the two Romanians and one that, that's named Anna Maria. Um, and uh, the other one, Sabrina, uh, Maria Barbozu, and another one is named Sabrina Moneca Voigne, because yeah. they were all caught up in this thing that, that's going on. It, all these, you know, and they're just great gymnasts, okay? Please. And they went out there on the floor. They did great stuff. Uh, the judge in the field of play said, yeah, I made a mistake. I'm going to put Jordan up a little. Uh, I'm going to, uh, what was her? Um, Sabrina hey, you know, you, you stepped out, so I'm going to give you and uh, put you down. And really, the court of arbitrations, arbitrators are not going to change those kinds of decisions. So that's that's the, the judges in the system knowing what they're doing. I don't know anything about gymnastics. Maybe any of you did it. I don't know. But so so the point is, is that now it goes to these these arbitrators and the arbitrator says, oh, four seconds too late. You know, uh, anyway. Ultimately, then, we wrote something on Monday, uh, which kind of went viral, which was basically just that um, we had real problems. The three of us, my, my wife, Odette, who used to work at the ICC, and Catherine Simpson, we wrote something together that CPR was happy put up, which was really nice, where we said this stinks, basically, because the chair of the tribunal is currently a lawyer representing Romania has represented Romania in an exit arbitrations and has had a relationship with Romania going back to 2011 and it wasn't clear he'd made the disclosures and all that stuff and basically in this kind of setting what you want to have and you know Catherine you know this better than me is to have uh, a neutral three people make a decision but how could you have a neutral three people where, you know, one of the presiding arbitrators had that, yeah, that, you know, had, had significant work going for a party that, you know, as a lawyer, you're supposed to do the best for your, your, your client. And granted, Romania is not technically the same thing as the Romanian Federation of Gymnasts, but you could see how that disclosure of all that would be useful so for the parties could see. And then you get to Catherine's stuff, which is that all these applications were started on August 6th with the hearing scheduled for August 10th. And the Americans don't ultimately get the stuff till August 9th, which I think okay. at four o'clock in the morning, if you were in Colorado Springs. OK, so I'm just giving you a sense of what you got to do with this duty to, you know, answer in 20, 22 hours. So U.S. Olympic and Paralympics Committee asked for an extension of time. They got two hours. 
uh, beyond that, and they and and they went to the hearing. So there's a whole series of issues about did the guy disclose? So he did disclose, but he didn't disclose completely. Okay, this is what's really interesting. There was both kind of over inclusive and under inclusive. How do I know this? Because the award was sent out on Tuesday or on the 14th, the yesterday, and I read the award. So, uh, and, hmm. and knowing the background. Okay. And, uh, so that was one of the problems, the problems that we're talking about these notification stuff. I mean, just notice opportunity to be heard enormous problems. I mean, amazingly enormous problems. Right. And, you know, there are a lot of things that are wrong with that award. In my opinion, I got no dog in this fight. I trust me. Uh, that really, um, so, you know, wrote up something about it. I won't go through them all here. Um, but one of the things that I learned today talking with some of the people I've been working with is that the net effect of all this is, look at this. This is really weird, okay? Let, Jordan Childs gets knocked down. So what happens then is that, uh, what's her name? Uh, Anna Maria... Um, Barbozu then becomes the bronze medalist with her score. But guess what? Sabrina Moneka Vueno has the exact same score mm -hmm. as Anna yes. Maria Barbozu. So the argument would be that they should jointly have the bronze medal, right? And so the Romanians are going to appeal the decision to dismiss uh sabrina's case to the swiss federal tribunal uh, so you know you look at all this and uh and uh there's a million things i could talk about but all i could say is i used to work in fast track arbitrations very fast i know arbitral tribunals that have done an award from the hearing to the actual award being notified in 36 hours okay so you know i i, I saw this stuff okay and the number of things that were weird here is unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. And so if it came to you, Judge, I would hope that you'd take a look at it and you wouldn't say, oh, that's arbitration. You agreed to it, so it's all that. You'd say, no, something stinks, you know? Absolutely. I think when you're looking at, like you, you mentioned, you know, the form over, over substance in this instance, particularly when the parties, the girls, the, who are the athletes, did what they were supposed to do, and this has nothing to do with them. It simply has to do with the people who are who are tasked with making decisions, making mistakes, uh, and that's just not acceptable. I mean, I'm I'm here as a the, the judge thing, but you know, a parent of an athlete too. So I've heard a lot from her about how this should have gone. Uh, I've heard a lot from her, believe me. And uh, as you mentioned about the scores of the two Romanians being the same, who are now deemed to be you know, bronze medalist, then brings the next question of what is there that prevents the awarding of of duplicate bronze medals or triplicate bronze medals? What prevents that from occurring? And if the rules don't allow for that, then we've got a real problem with how our rules are set up under these circumstances when the reason for the dip, the, pres the position that we're in is not is not because of anything that the athletes did not do. They did, as you said, Ben and Catherine too, they did what they were supposed to do. And it was the responsibility of those judges, either we trust them or we don't, um, and here we are. There's another other element to this too, which is another discussion having to do with, you know, the whole history of, of gymnastics and race in gymnast in gymnastics, you know, going back to the, uh, you know, Komenichi days um, when Romania was, no, was she Romania? Yeah. Yeah, she was. Yeah. What? Having such an influence. And and then even in that, the ability of, of Black gymnasts to break into this whole field. I mean, it didn't, not until, what was it, Gabby Douglas in, um, was it Gabby Douglas back in, I forget the exact year, uh, she went through a, a, a very difficult, challenging time breaking into this. Uh, I did watch that, um, uh, this, I think it's a Netflix or a, maybe Amazon with Simone Biles talking about the same issues, you know, down to the things about, you know, where the 
where your hair clips are supposed to be, all that kind of stuff that they've had to deal with. And so you get to this point and probably one of the more poignant uh, and, uh, just, you know, memes that's going around the internet had to do with the positioning of three uh, Black women gymnasts, uh, Rebecca from, from Brazil and Simone and Jordan, particularly that sort of iconic photo of them giving that deference to Rebecca. And, you know, there's the, you know, three Black gymnasts, first time ever, 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 ever in the history of how gymnastics is done. And then that mean, as uh, Chuck may have pointed out earlier, their responses to that, uh, uh, you know, you can imagine. I'm really actually really glad you mentioned the iconic photo because I think that's important here. And that is part of the Olympic Olympism, the Olympic Charter, um, the uh, the fairness, and uh -huh. and you know the um, USA Gymnastics did appeal this to the Swiss Federal Tribunal, and um, they rarely overturn decisions. However, they can if there's a violation of uh -huh. procedural rules or public policy, which I believe there has been here. Um, uh -huh. uh, but looking at this issue, and I think. Um, the remedy here is to give more than one bronze medal mm -hmm. in light of the issue. And there is is a lot of precedence for that. And the the one instance that I thought was an example that would be uh, could be cited here would be Sydney 2000 um, Olympics, men's mm -hmm. all around gym, gymnastics. One of the most famous examples occurred uh, when the men's all around gymnastics um, competition, there was a scoring error and the IOC awarded gold medals to both, to both. Russia and China um, who were initially differently. Mm -hmm. um, the decision was made to rectify the situation to ensure that both athletes uh, received fair recognition for their performances. There have There is precedence for awarding two of the same medal where there's a tie. Mm -hmm. as well and yeah. and because we have precedence for that because there's clear error here um i believe that jordan child should um retain her bronze but perhaps um one or more uh, romanians should also get bronze the the romanians propose that all three get uh, bronze in their submissions to, uh, but okay. uh, there wasn't a lot of a, there wasn't consensus agreement to do that. Uh, but there have been some awards by consent. At least one I saw where that had happened with two with two uh, two two competitors. Um, I just wanted to add a couple things, if I could, uh, Chuck, which is um, on the issue of uh, blacks in gym in gymnastics. Um, Living in France, I uh, watched the Olympics back in the 90s, particularly the Winter Olympics. Maybe it was, yeah, it was Winter Olympics. And there was a French skater, which is Winter Olympic skating person named Surya Bonali, who was uh, a, a black French girl who, you know, she did some of the most amazing things. And I distinctly remember the kind of, uh, I don't know what it was. She, she didn't have the look. She was too muscular. It's a Serena Williams type stuff. Well, yeah, that, that we, mm -hmm. you know that kind of stuff that 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 they that uh, they had to deal with at that time. Um, just uh, and just so just on 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 that iconic picture. One of the things that just occurred to me when you're talking, Catherine and Sa Sandra, was that in the closing ceremony, there was a. Uh, the awards were given for the uh, marathon, the women's marathon. And it was three African women. Okay. So three black women too, again. Okay. I mean, it's just like, I was like, wow, what, what's going on? I mean, I don't know. I'm just, you know, what is the, the deep hidden meaning factor here? I don't know what it is, but I just struck that that's what they picked. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, um, it, 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 one of the things that's a little complicated in this case is that from reading the, the award is that the Americans asked for an extension of time, but the Americans were put in a position of being called interested parties 
and not either the applicant or the respondents. Well, the two Romanian gymnasts were allowed to become applicants as part of the, so who's a party and who's an interested yeah. party uh, and who has the power to do certain things like object to an arbitrator, you know, there's a lot of different stuff. And the IOC was also put in as an interesting, interested party. And the IOC said, we're not gonna say anything but you need to get this done by the closing, <laughs> the closing ceremony. And that's, yeah. in, that's in the award. And so, you know, the, the, the speed versus, you know, the speed thing is always there, but it's also the haste it's, thing. So yeah. that's, uh, I mean, because if they waited till Monday, right? It turns out the Americans had some evidence to come in that said that it was in fact done within the, the 60 seconds, right? So, and that they had that on Sunday. So, you know, even theoretically they could have had a way to day, but you know, that's One all for the Swiss, Swiss and, Federal and, Tribunal. And, and it's clearly, not over though, it's not and, over. And clearly the judges and the, and FIG thought that they did timely make a an appeal. Yeah. And so, I mean, so essentially, um, that even makes cast more um, seem more biased because they didn't even adhere to what the judges and Figs' decision was. It's a real nasty little spot here, and um, from what I've heard, um, you know, people have lost their medals because of doping or cheating or things That's like different. that, or corruption or something like that. Don't but from what I hear from athletes, this is not, this is, this uh, is different. a new one. This is a new one. Yeah. So we're out of time for today, regrettably. We could keep this on for hours. Oh, okay. And I have one more point more to make about that. But okay. no, last point, Sandra. <laughs> In the Simone Biles um, documentary, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see it, there is a segment in there where they talk about the role of, um, the Corollis in coming to the U.S. and kind of taking over that whole way in which gymnasts oh, are trained. Yeah. And it was it was not a positive piece at all. Mm. Mm. It was very, very, uh, and then of course it rolled into the Nasser, um, you know, Dr. Uh, Jim Nasser's convictions. Yeah. And that yeah. whole segment, you know, really cast the Romanian coaches in a very bad light. Mm. Point. I'm that just putting it out to there. Shimanichi as well. Yeah. 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 So when you talk about there not being the disclosures, you know, for the, uh, you know, for the for the Romanians in this in this arbitration, uh, you got to think there's something something. <laughs> anyway, I'm done. Catherine, <laughs> last thoughts. Oh, I think uh, Sandra made an excellent point, and I hadn't thought of that before, but. Um, it doesn't help the Romanian cause any, I don't think. But we have to always remember that the athletes work very hard and yes. they have a lifetime for this. So um, we do need to take away politics as Coubertin would have um, envisioned um, and, and focus on the athletes' achievements and their fair, and fair results and fair competition. Well said. Ben, last thoughts? So um, I was a big advocate of fast track arbitration back in the day when I used to work at the ICC, the movie Duke Fast. And I organized an event for a, the former chairman of the ICC court named Michel Godet. He's literally one of the guys who helped create the European Union. You know, I mean, this was an amazing gentleman. And we called it, because of my thing, uh, 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 the need for speed. And he spoke at lunch, uh, you know, when we were honoring him at the... Uh, uh, at, at the Prince de Gaulle the hotel, it was a very fancy hotel. And he said, in order to have speed, you got to have trust. And it still always stayed with me. And so, you know, for this thing to work, it's got people have to, this, the athletes, everyone have to trust it. You can go fast if uh, there's trust, but if you don't have that trust, you yeah. have a problem. And I think that there's been a, a real concern about a betrayal of the trust of the athletes and potentially anyone who's sort of arbitration friendly uh, in terms of how this all worked out. And uh, and I think there's a, a moment of reflection beyond <laughs> solving the problem of these three athletes, a moment of reflection in that in the arbitration community would be useful. 
about what it means to disclose, what it means to have that trust, to have that uh, that honor of being that person. And that's a great way to wrap it up. Yes. Because, hey, Catherine, Sandra, and the common element here is to honor and respect the athletes and what they put into this. We've seen recent Olympics have done portrayals of what some of the athletes and their families have done to get where they got. Exactly. And what they put into this and the toll it takes on them. Simone Biles has helped bring that out. It stars in the tennis arena and basketball and other areas. And Catherine, I know you've followed the women's gymnastics for years, and that's been a serious, serious problem area for decades. So let's come back to this, maybe after this process comes to its conclusion, whatever that may be. And let's take a look at where the balance is missing and where it needs to go, because it clearly is not there. Think Tech Hawaii, thank you so much for joining us. Aloha and come back and join us again next week. Mm -hmm.